Grüß willkommen in einem anderen of Regen's video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case, episode 19 of my game design series of videos. In this video, I'll be providing a brief overview of 20th century naval rules. As with my other naval videos, to a large extent, this is going to be a placeholder, and I'll be coming back to expand it. Initially, I'll be just starting with a very brief overview of 20th century naval rules. I have to admit gaming World War II naval quite a lot back in the 1990s, but mainly in a board game format. I used to play s and Dreadnought and Fast Carriers for the, for the main effect. In all the rules which I'll be listing here, each naval figure represents one real naval vessel. There's no attempt to scale the figures, which means it'll be difficult to refight the larger, let's say, World War I naval battles such as Jutland, although not impossible. Due to uh, a lack of experience with a wide range of different rules, I'm not going to analyse the game system or the history of the rules. Instead, I'll simply list all the rules I'm aware of and provide comments accordingly. Jutland was Jim Dunnigan's first game for Avalon Hill. This is a play-on-the-floor game with measured movement and range-finding, enabling you to refight the Great War I battles with up to 72 individual ships per side. It was reissued in 1974. I've mainly seen this game in a board game format and mainly played it in that format. However, I am aware that there are quite a few players that have converted this to a figure gaming set of rules and they seem to indicate that it works quite well. Although my understanding is the playing area may need to be rather large depending on the scale of your vessels or figures. A CA is a tactical World War II game based around the Pacific and was published in Strategy and Tactics magazine number 38. Counters represent individual battleships, battle cruisers, heavy and light cruisers and destroyers with varying characteristics to recreate seven famous battles in the Pacific theatre plus three other hypothetical scenarios which could have occurred. All the essential elements of surface combat are recreated, including gunnery, torpedoes, varying types of damage, night sighting, and momentum. Battles include Salvo Island, Guadalcanal, Cape Esperance, Tasafango, uh, Colombangara, and August Bay. The hypotheticals pit the Yamoto, Nagato, and Hiei with screening escorts against the Iowa, North Carolina, and Maryland with similar fleet compositions in one scenario, and the others equally interesting. There is a list of wartime ships available to the USN and IJN navies to keep you busy. Unlike other naval games of the time, the map is a single 22 by 35 inch sheet and the various scenarios recognise certain land masses. In this case, if you convert it to a figure gaming format, you will almost certainly need a hex grid unless you want to put some effort into modifying the rules to remove the hex um, grid type arrangements in terms of movement and gun range. Dreadnought, another SPI a board game, is a surface a game covering surface combat in the battleship era 1906 to 45 and is a two player simulation of surface naval warfare in the period 1906 to 1944 with the primary emphasis on the role of the all big gun battleship Dreadnought basically in fleet actions. Historical and non-historical battles and naval campaigns are presented. Essential elements of surface naval combat are recreated, including gunnery, torpedoes, ranging, damage control, formation handling, and fleet coordination. As far as I can work out, or based on my experience with this, um, it's primarily focused on World War Two. I'm oh, sorry, World War One. Although you can certainly refight a number of the smaller World War Two conflicts. In terms of the scale, each game turn represents 15 minutes. Each hex represents 1,800 metres. Uh, movement is, um, well, in, it, the units are individual battleships and multiple cruiser destroyers, and all movement is in elements of four knots. Fast Carriers is yet another SPI board game. It is an SPI simulation of World War II carrier warfare and its impact on combat tactics in the Pacific. It has a simple uh, sea island map, with large hexes which are used to position task forces and flight sorties. A place map for each active carrier is used to track carrier operations. All individual combat planes and ships are represented with, uh, with search planes abstracted. Tactical air-to-ship combat is played out on a tactical hex-based all-sea map with individual planes uh, which include altitude, angle of attack and multiple ways of aircraft which are represented. Basically it uh, has a strategic map 
which uh, allows you to move your task forces with a double blind system and a tactical map which allows you to recreate the actual aircraft attacks against your task forces. Once again, you will almost certainly need a hex grid if you wish to play this out in figures unless you want to make the effort to convert the um, system to a non-hex system. Naval Thunder Clash of Dreadnoughts is a true figure gaming set of rules and is an exciting fast-paced naval miniatures war game that brings all the excitement of big gun naval combat to your tabletop. Newcomers will appreciate how straightforward and easy to learn the basic system is, while naval wargaming veterans can take advantage of the optional rule system to add additional layers of detail to the game. Naval Thunder has been designed from the keel up to be fun, fast-paced and full of flavour so you can focus on the thrill of commanding a ship or fleet at sea instead of tedious charts or calculations. The fast and exciting shooting and damage resolution system ensures that you can attack with an entire division of battleships in just a couple of minutes. A battle involving do a dozen battleships and battle cruisers on each side can be fought to a conclusion in a couple of hours in a fast and furious exciting play experience that offers enormous tactical depth. The robust optional rule system allows the game to grow with you as you gain experience, ensuring the Naval Thunder will be your naval miniature system of choice for years to come. There are more than 20 completely modular optional rules that allow you to model historically accurate factors in influencing naval combat of the era. You can pick and choose which rules to include, allowing you to tailor the place of play and level of detail to your own personal preference. Victory at Sea, Age of Dreadnought, is a game of naval combat during the First World War. Now you can play out these confrontations on the tabletop with the entire fleet drawn from the Royal Navy, Navy's Grand Fleet, the Kaiserlichter Marina Hosseflot, or any one of the other nations featured in Victory at Sea, Age of Dreadnought. From skirmishes involving single cruisers hunting down merchantmen and surface raiders to the clash of fleets, Victory at Sea, Age of Dreadnought is your gateway to exciting battles that took place on the oceans during the Great War. Age of Dreadnought is a World War I adaptation of Mongoose, Victory at Sea, first edition, published in 2009. In recent years, the book and its PDF have been given a complete overrun or overrun redone. As a result of recent interest from a number of players in obtaining the rules, I've been given permission by Matt at MGP to make the PDF rulebook available again here. Obviously what I'm reading is the blurb um, on the um, website for the games. Based on the Victory in Sea World War II naval combat game, World War II game, the core this game design is by Matthew Sprange. Age of Dreadnought is an all new set of rules and Fleet list for pre-Dreadnought and World War I naval combat. Besides basic fire and movement rules, formation fighting, destroyers, fillers, and even poor compartmentalization are detailed as well as other rules simulating naval combat at the beginning of the 20th century. Based on LFGs, a broadside and salvo, Sivis Pactum is a set of fast play naval war game rules designed to enable the largest battles of World War I, including Jutland, to be played and finished in a day. Sipak Zivis Pactum, Parabellum, if you desire peace, prepare for war, my apologies for my atrocious Latin, was the motto of the Royal Navy at the time of the Great War. The one interesting point about 20th century naval warfare is the division between carrier warfare and big gun warfare. My main interest was carrier warfare, and still is. However, recreating a carrier battle with figures always resulted in me having a strategic map and a separate tactical map. On the tactical map, the fight was only between the task force or the ships and the enemy attacking aircraft. Obviously, there will also be air-to-air -air combat as well. The result is an environment which does not really suit figure gaming, unless, of course, your main objective is to refight those conflicts between aircraft and ships, which is where most of the action occur. The strategic map is basically an opportunity to have a double-blind system where you move around your task forces and send out reconnaissance to identify the start of the battle, almost like a campaign. The strategic is like the campaign, and the tactical is the battle that um, really is what you're playing for. After many attempts at trying to recreate carry warfare, I've come to the conclusion the best 20th century games only really involve big guns, or even medium or small guns. World War I is a sweet swap spot, with World War II also offering some interesting conflicts as well, as long as you avoid to as much as possible aircraft carriers. 
when we move over to Cold War naval war game, we, we still end up with our carrier issues, as missiles often have a significant range. I've not tried very much Cold War naval war game, and I'm uncertain how viable it is. As the missiles have a simple trajectory and obviously purpose, missile combat could be rapid, and as long as you use a highly logarithmic scale on your playing area, you may be able to have opposing fleets firing missiles at each other instead of guns. Once aircraft come into the picture, we may have issues. As um, I indicated at the beginning of the video, I will definitely come back to this video and update it as I expand my rules. But at the moment, I will provide no comments about game system apart from my observation about carrier big gun conflict. I simply lack the experience of enough rules to provide a reasonable analysis. My main background was board gaming, and I know that reasonably well. But uh, that can only really provide a narrow view of the various rules, game systems and options. Board gaming tends to have a very different objective to figure gaming. Board gaming normally tries to reproduce historical conflicts rather than um, hypothetical conflicts uh, or theoretical conflicts. And so we come to a conclusion of my episode 19 of my video on game system design, which in this case provides an overview of 20th century naval figure gaming rules. Alla guten Ding, commons, wainem, ende.